Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 96. Right. So, yeah, um, I, full disclosure, I had G.I. Joe in the long-term play of the week, and I thought, you know what? I just can't do that. I'm being a homer. Let me, let me keep it real with the community. 96 is the long-term play. And I'll also admit, I don't love 96. Um, you might have noticed, and I caught a little bit of flack, I didn't have 96 down as a first appearance. Um, the market can't decide what a first appearance is. So for the purpose of the Bolo list and the purpose of the Bolo show, and honestly, for the purpose of Simplement's Comics YouTube channel, Brian and I have been talking about it. And we're going to follow Marvel's lead with when they put out that um, that advertising on before the X-Men. And we're going to call a first appearance when a character first appears. So Jenica Turtle first appeared in 95. I, there's no – I haven't seen a rule book yet on what's a cameo and what's a um, – a first appearance. So if I've got, if I have one, I'm going to write it myself and I'm going to say when a character first appears, it's a first appearance period. So last page, splash page, that was enough for me. Um, I think most of the people talking about this book, and I'm going to go on a little bit of rant here, guys who are talk calling this book a first appearance. Some of it is innocent. Some of it is just them looking back at, you know, old information. Um, but some of it's comics politics. And if you don't know what I mean by comics politics, we've seen this. Again, guys like Brian and I who have been in this game a long time, we've seen this before, especially in the Google Plus days. Boy, it never was worse than that. Um, you miss out on a book. The book gets expensive. So you start playing those internet politics games and you're typing up, oh, it's not a first appearance. He doesn't appear enough or she doesn't appear enough. The next issue will be a first appearance. Um, and that's, a lot of that's wishful thinking. 95 is a 30 to 40 dollar book in rising um the the incentive is a 70 hundred dollar book um and i think undervalued because it's dropped a little bit um and i think a lot of people want to see 96 as a first appearance because it you know they thought it was going to be a little easier to obtain 96 the reason i say thought is because foc had already passed Brian and I went through the ringer trying to deal with uh, some incentive – or not incentive, uh, some retailer exclusive variants for 96 or 97. But those FOC dates came quick, and it's a little tougher with Turtles because you have to get it approved by Nickelodeon, which is no shade on anybody individually. But that's why you're seeing some terrible store exclusive art for 97 and 98 um, and why you didn't see any for 96. But, um, yeah, so this book – Everybody was in their LCS looking for this book. Most people str either struggled to get it or could get like a copy. Um, it was, most stores limited this. So, you know, this book is doing really well. Uh, a and B sets are doing very well. It pales in comparison to 95, but they're still they're still doing numbers. The incentive is in huge demand. Um, last time I checked, I think it was like 40 to 50 bucks. I'm not totally up on what it's doing at this moment. But yeah, it's 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 a major issue, and it but it doesn't really tell a lot of the Jenica story. Um, it's what I call a connector issue because ninety five is incredibly important as that first appearance, and ninety seven is going to be incredibly important because we already know from IDW like I'd say leak, but they put out the information that that's when Jenica's getting that yellow bandana and officially becoming a member of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and so ninety seven you can. I'll even let you argue with me that 97 is a first appearance. Not the first appearance of Jenica as a turtle, but the first appearance of the new team. You guys know how I feel about team books, but you know what? i got to be honest with you. I kind of like that one. Um, that's a, a that's a you, probably a first appearance being a team. 96, I can't really find anything to place it as what it is other than saying – if you went with the first appearance argument, which I've already told you, I don't agree with. Um, if you're going to quote me Hulk 180, number one, that was before the internet. So there, you know, who was making that decision? Secondly, I have it on good authority from the OGs in the game that old school comic book stores considered Hulk 180 a first appearance until things like grading companies and Overstreet and places like that started naming 181 as the first appearance. And if you're going to bring up Venom, yeah, I think 299 is the first appearance of Venom. So didn't, they, um, didn't this have something to do with some of that also? Yes, that's what I was talking about. That's that Marvel put that out, and they agree. So the, uh, Taskmaster's first appearance, 195, if you ask me. And uh, again, apparently if you ask Marvel. Um, you know, I don't think uh, 
Uncanny 266 is Gambit's first appearance because he was in that Uncanny X-Men, I think, 14 um, annual. So, uh, you know, I think that a lot of this is just wishful thinking and false comparisons. And I said this to um, Mighty Mel V uh, on on the drunken chat. I appeared in the last two hours of his giant eight-hour marathon. Um, I was completely sober, though. I can't say the same for the rest of my... uh, They gave you crap for drinking water, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it was like five in the morning, man. Who could start drinking at five in the morning? But, um, but yeah, so, um, you know, we talked about it then, and I made the comment to Mel V. I said, you know, certainly as a country... We've learned you can't just continue to do something because that's the way it's always been done. Tradition is good, but sometimes when you're making a mistake, you got to course correct. And as a comic community, we need to course correct just pointing to these couple issues and saying, well, because those books were that, therefore everything that comes after it is that. Because I think we were making mistakes in the hobby. I'm Look, I love Topher and I love True First, but I'm not arguing that like Daredevil 115 is Wolverine's first appearance. Which features, if you're not aware, um, a advertisement for a Hulk 181 and Wolverine, um, or just the first appearance of Wolverine. I'm not arguing that. Um, I certainly see the value in it, but I'm not trying to make that argument. I'm simply saying, what does first appearance mean to you? Uh, it means first appearance. If I walk into a room for the first time, that's my first appearance in the room. I don't have to say three words for me to have just appeared in the room. That's not how it works. I don't have to stay in the room for 10 minutes for me first appearing in the room. That's not how it works. There's no panel requirements. There's no word requirements. We don't have that defined. And who other than CBSI, in my opinion, it, you know, you can say Overshoot, you can say all these other places, but we are certainly an authority on these things. And now we as CBSI, we're a collective, so we don't always even among ourselves all agree. But that's how I feel, and I feel very strongly about it. Um, so, yeah, I look at things like Venom 299 and Hulk 180 as almost undervalued keys in the market, especially Venom 299, just slept on. I know that those cover appearances are sexy, guys. I know that you want those, and I know that sometimes you miss out on a book and you're hoping 96 is a first appearance. But the reality of the situation is 95 is hot for a reason. But you may be saying... Mr. Bolo, you're really uh, negative on 96. No, again, it's a connector issue. 97 is important. 95 is important. We're on the road to 100, such a monumental moment in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles history. People are going to want that set from 95 to 100. They're going to want to see how this Jenica story plays out. Um, And you can't have that set without 96. And because we talked about where FOC was on 96, there wasn't enough time for stores to really truly react to 95 and get those orders up on 96. They were able to, they had a small window, but it wasn't very big. And it was reflected in the shortage that we're seeing in the market of this book, which is why it's going over, over cover. I don't think this book is going so high over cover because, because there's a first appearance. I don't care what people put in their eBay titles. Let's be honest. People put, will put that in their eBay title for the next four books. If they think that that helps them sell a book better. The reality of the situation is it happened because people wanted this book and couldn't buy it. And that's the law of supply and demand. And that works in comics time in and time out. Comics is a hobby, but it's retail. And that's, you know, that's my profession. That's what I went to college for. Um, I've seen it time and time again. And uh, any time that you have just such a demand for a book and the supply cannot match it, you're going to see that happen. But I will tell you, there'll be a lot more 97s on the market because of those store variants, because of people having a little extra time to get that order. And uh, 97 will be more readily available. But when you're comparing a typical 10,000 print run, even if there's 40 or 50,000 comics out there, which would be huge for a Ninja Turtle run, Marvel releases books with three, four, five 500,000 print runs. I still think there's going to be a shortage on the market. You just, you're not going to see, don't expect to see these crazy $50 returns on um, 97 and beyond. Right. But yeah, 96 is a long-term play because people are going to want that set. People are going to want that book. And um, I think it's going to have value long-term, regardless of whether or not you can put a cool label on it. <laughs>